God wants you to fight evil. Like, he wants you to put on armor and take out the devil. Like, hello everyone, today we're gonna do something a little different. I've never read this book, so we're gonna read through it together. It is the Manual for Spiritual Warfare, so if you're interested in that, please stick around. <laughs> If you're new here, my name's Amanda Marie. I'm a consecrated virgin in the Catholic Church, and that channel is kind of about being Catholic and being a consecrated virgin and sharing it all with you. Today, I wanted to do something a little bit different than what norm I normally do. Normally, the documents or books that I talk about are ones I have read already. Um, this one's a new one. This is the Manual for Spiritual Warfare by Paul Thigpen, or edited by him, I guess. And it has the Nil Obstad and Imprimatur, if you're curious at all. It is published by Tan Books. And I will have a link to it in the description if you're interested in it. But I just wanted to start with it today because with everything going on in the church in the past few weeks, it just seems appropriate. Because we all know that we're under spiritual attack, whether we admit it or not. In the beginning of this book, I just opened it up and the first chapter is called Know Your Enemy. Well, that's what we all gotta do first. We gotta know our enemy. So that's where I'm gonna start. And I've never read this book before. Like I said, I purchased it kind of on a whim like a year ago and I put it on my shelf and I was like, I'll get to it when I get to it because I don't really need it right now too much. I mean, yeah, I know there's spiritual warfare all the time, but I was like, I don't wanna deal with it. Well, now seems like the time we need to deal with it. So let's see what it says. Know your enemy. First, it has a scripture verse. 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 8 to 9 Be sober, be watchful. For your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, goes about seeking someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in your faith. That can be so hard with everything going on in the world and not knowing how we can really do anything to change it beyond prayer. It's hard to stay steadfast in our faith and that's what we're called to do. <sighs> We can do it, we can do it, we can do it by the grace of God. Like it or not, you are at war. Ooh, that's a bit strong words. Like it or not, you are at war. No matter who you are, whether or not you know it, you have a mortal enemy who wants to destroy you. Not just in this life, but in the next. No matter where you live on this planet, whether or not you can see it, you live on a hotly contested battlefield and you can't escape the conflict. Wow, that just seems to really hit with what's going on in the world, especially with what's going on in the church. We live on a hotly contested battlefield and we really can't escape. Um, we could jump ship, but that's not really gonna help anything and then the devil just wins. <laughs> so let's not do that. It is a spiritual war with crucial consequences in your everyday life and the outcome of that war will determine your eternal destiny. Okay, that's not exactly comforting. Um, yeah, not comforting at all really that what happens in our daily life determines our eternal destiny. And <laughs> I'm sorry, I wanna get to heaven someday. I know that's probably gonna be purgatory time because I am in no way perfect enough to go to heaven as soon as I die. I know that. I have <laughs> attachment to sin like every other human in this world. The first rule of any type of warfare is to know your enemy. How can you fight an adversary you can't identify? Worse yet, how can you avoid being a casualty in a battle going on all around you if you don't even recognize that you're in danger? Well, that's a good question and we are really recognizing more and more in the recent events that we are in danger and the devil's real. So we're gonna learn about him, I guess, in this chapter. Your adversary is the devil with his army of demons. Your battle with him rages not only all around you, but also within you. A fierce conflict for control of your mind, your heart, and your ultimate destiny. The world may scoff and tell you there is no devil and no battle, but the world has been blinded to these realities by the enemy himself. Its skepticism is part of his stealth strategy. Those who deny his existence are an easy prey. Whoa. Okay, we don't wanna become prey to the devil. And in our world, it's so easy 
in the secular culture for people to deny that the devil exists. It's one of the first things they all like start telling us. I see it a lot in Protestant churches too, where they all go, um, even some Catholic churches recently, well, not as recently, but like before all this stuff started breaking, would be like, oh, God loves you, God is love, God just wants you to be happy. Um, no. God wants you to fight evil. Like, he wants you to put on armor and take out the devil. Like, that's our, like, that's our mission, people. Like, we're not just supposed to sit here and watch the world go by or do things that make us happy. We're fighting a battle. We are fighting a battle with the devil, with the evil one, and he knows that he can't win in the end, but he's gonna do everything in his power to take as many down with him as he possibly can. Because in the end, we do know that Christ, God is gonna win. Christ wins, God wins. That's the end of the story. But in the meantime, the devil's fighting tooth and nail. He is fighting to take as many people with him to hell as possible. And I don't wanna be one of those casualties. You don't wanna be one of those casualties. You don't want to choose hell. You don't want to be a casualty of the evil one. And it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be real hard sometimes. The next section here says evidence of the battle. How do we know that demons are real? Consider first the accumulated evidence of confirming testimony. Throughout all history, peoples of vastly different cultures around the globe have affirmed the reality of evil spirits. Even when they have disagreed about most other spiritual realities, many of our contemporaries as well, who by any reasonable standard are intelligent and in their right mind, have testified to encou having encounters with demonic powers. No doubt, some types of mental and physical illnesses have been wrongly attributed to demons, today as in the past, nor can we deny that superstitions and legends about evil spirits abound. But these misguided ideas about the devil don't in themselves prove that he doesn't exist. Just as age-old beliefs about a flat earth don't prove that our planet doesn't exist. Skeptics may demand scientific evidence, but what kind of relevant evidence would scientists be capable of measuring? The natural sciences measure time, matter, energy, and motion. The social sciences analyze human behavior. Demons have no physical bodies and they aren't human. We can't put them in test tubes or subject them to psychoanalysis. Wow, what a reminder that this is a spiritual battle. That demons aren't physical realities, they are spiritual. And that is scarier than having a physical enemy sometimes. With a physical enemy, they can only do so many things. Spiritual enemies, they've got more power, it seems, sometimes. The most, then, that scientists can do is observe the effects of demons on the physical world or on human behavior. But the prevailing mentality among scientists will press them to seek other explanations for such phenomenon, even when these explanations are utterly inadequate. In any case, for Catholics and other Christians, the issue should be settled. The number of passages in the Bible testify to the existence of the devil and his evil allies. See chapter 8, Scriptures for the Battle. Okay, so he's going to give us scriptures later on to help us with this. It's kind of a good thing they have a manual because more than ever, I think we need this type of stuff. The Gospel accounts in particular record that Jesus Christ himself conversed with Satan. Our Lord's debate with the devil in the wilderness was not simply some inner dialogue with himself about temptation. Christ referred to demons on more than one occasion, and casting evil spirits out of those who were possessed was a striking and indispensable aspect of his mission. Of course, some interpreters have claimed that when Christ cast out evil spirits, he was simply healing a physical or mental disorder misunderstood as demonic possession. But we need only reply that on at least one occasion, at Christ's command, the demons left their human host to take possession of animals instead. You can't cast a medical disorder out of a man into a pig. If Christ knew what he was doing, as Christians must insist, and if the gospel account is historically reliable, as Christians must also insist, then we must conclude that the forces described there as evil spirits are precisely that. Evil spirits are real. Like, you know, we try to tell our children that, you know, we try to tell them that life is good and all this stuff, but Demons exist, evil is real. I remember when the movie Princess and the Frog came out and there was the voodoo man, the scary whatever his name is, Facilier or whatever, but like it was really hard watching that with some, um, with a Catholic family because I was watching it with a friend of mine and her siblings and her siblings are all younger than her and she 
couldn't tell them at the end of the movie that demons aren't real. She couldn't tell them that the evil isn't real because the evil is real. It is a real threat and it does hurt people. The reality of demonic powers has been a constant doctrine of the Catholic Church ever since it was founded by Christ through his apostles. They and their successors spoke and wrote about Satan repeatedly. Through the centuries, the great teachers of the church have constantly affirmed that he is real. Satan's existence has also been confirmed in authoritative declarations by popes and church councils. See chapter 7, Church Teaching About Spiritual Warfare. Okay, we'll get some of that later. He's referred to in the liturgy of the church and throughout the centuries, numerous saints whose moral integrity and mental health can hardly be debated have testified to personal battles with demonic assailants. See chapter nine, help from the saints. Okay, this just sounds like it's gonna be a pretty good book. It's got all these other chapters that are gonna help us figure out what to do because Satan's real, the evil one is real, evil exists. And in the world we live in, in the secular world, people try to tell us evil isn't real, but evil is real. Yet even aside from the church's teachings, the evidence of demonic intervention in human affairs is all around us daily. As Father Ronald Knox once wryly noted, it is stupid of modern civilization to have given up believing in the devil when he is the only explanation of it. Oh, okay. This is like, evil is real, people. Evil is real. Evil is real. Like the evil one is real. Spiritual warfare is a real thing. That's just the first half of the first chapter. I don't want to do too much and overwhelm anyone because um, just reading this myself, I'm a little overwhelmed. Like, evil is real. The evil one is real. Like, I knew it and I know it, but seeing it in print and being able to talk about it, it's not something we talk about in our daily lives usually, but maybe we should. Maybe we should be saying evil's a real thing and we need to do what we can to stop evil because <laughs> evil's real. Please let me know down in the comments something you learned from this video. I mean, I always learn from your comments, as I've said over and over, and you all interact with each other and learn from each other too down in the comments, which is really a wonderful thing. I'll leave a link to this book in the description. Um, yeah, please read along with me. It's gonna be our battle. We can do this, people. We can do this. Um, we can win. Christ has won. We just don't want to be casualties. We don't want to choose hell. We want to go to heaven. We can do this. We can do this. Hope you all have a wonderful week. God bless you.